This is a country without a government, and it is unlikely an agreement can be reached soon, now that Saudi Arabia has said it abandoned mediation efforts. A major player in Lebanese politics, Riyadh has long supported the camp of caretaker Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri. The Lebanese crisis is in foreign hands. We know the decision is in the hands of foreign powers which are fighting a proxy war here. Political divisions have resurfaced following the UN draft indictment into the 2005 assassination of Sunni former Prime Minister Rafiq al-Hariri, an indictment widely believed to implicate Hezbollah, a Shia group. Mohammed fears this could have grave consequences. A Shia and a supporter of the opposition has been living in a Sunni stronghold where the Hariri camp holds sway. It's no longer a political conflict. It has become sectarian, and this is not new. People are loyal to their sect. And there is tension. The fear now is that political differences may spill onto the streets. Just over two years ago, Lebanon witnessed the worst violence since the end of the civil war in 1990. Street battles between rival political camps took place in mixed neighborhoods like this one. Since then, the Lebanese army has been deployed in potential flashpoints. Sarah told me the country is boiling, and for her, violence may be the answer. Both parties should compromise, and um, for the people at least. And um, I do believe in violence because I do believe that violence may lead to peace for, for the future. While Saudi Arabia may have decided to pull out, Qatar and Turkey are pushing forward, meeting leaders in Lebanon and Syria, a major supporter of the opposition. They have vowed to work around the clock to find a solution. But time is ticking, and a deal that doesn't satisfy all may turn back the clock to a dark past. Zana Khudr, Al Jazeera, Beirut.